to my presentation. First of all, I would like to thank NanoG and the organizers for giving me the opportunity of participating in online NFM20 conference and thank you for having interest in my topic. So, before we jump in the world of near-infrared photo organic photodetectors, I wanted to raise a question. Why are near-infrared photodetectors important anyway? Why should one care about near-infrared photodetectors? Well, as most of you might know, we are surrounded by near-infrared photodetectors. So much so, in fact, that probably you have one in your pocket right now. The one in your phone that detects if you have it up against your head or not to turn off or on your screen while you talk. Or the one on your TV remote or the ones that are receiving this information, the information of this very presentation on your router right now, as I talk. But near-infrared photodetectors can also be used for other purposes, like medical diagnosis and imaging, brain scanning, or even self-driving cars. Okay, so now that we are convinced that near-infrared photodetectors are great, why would we want to make them organic? Well, because they pose a series of interesting advantages. They can be processed from solution, so they can be printed, which means we don't have to spend so much energy on the manufacturing process, which means it costs less to produce. Printing is also highly scalable, and we can print onto lightweight plastic, which can be non-planar or even flexible. Finally, since we are using inks, we can chemically tailor the band gap of those inks to adjust the band gap of the photodetector at will. However, not everything is perfect with organic photodetectors. They also have some drawbacks, like their fast degradation, their lower responsivity, and their speed when compared with silicon or INGA as. However, they share a drawback with their inorganic counterparts. Their absorption is limited by their band gap. As we can see in this absorption curve, Organic materials only absorb efficiently above their band gap, which means that for near-infrared absorption we need low band gap materials that can be difficult to manufacture due to their chemical complexity, as you can see in the molecules here below. A possible solution for that limitation is to take advantage of the charge transfer state absorption, which usually has a lower transition energy than the single state absorption so it can absorb deeper into the near-infrared. However, the charge transfer state absorption strength is around two orders of magnitude lower than the singlet absorption, due to the fact that it's an intermolecular state. In order to increase, increase the absorption, we propose a light-trapping strategy, strategy with photonic crystals, so that photons have a longer path within the active layer and a higher chance of being absorbed. Not only that, but by tuning the lattice parameter of the photonic crystal, we could, in principle, select which wavelengths get diffracted, being able to tune the wavelength response of the photodetector. The first thing we did was to design the device and choose the active layer materials. We decided to use P3HTPC60BM because it's one of the most studied materials in organic photodetectors and solar cells, and also PV triple T PC7 TBM because it has a very long uh, charge transfer state absorption tail. We wanted to keep everything roll to roll compatible, so we decided to use nano imprinting lithography to generate the nanostructure for any crystal on the back electrode. To do so, we nanostructure the device, sorry, we nanostructure the active layer and then evaporated the back electrode onto the nanostructure layer so that the nanostructure was also transferred to the back electrode. We did it with three different lattice parameters. That is why you see three different colors being diffracted on the final device, which shows iridescence. We also simulated the absorption increase that this structure would have and we saw that when compared to planar devices, the electric field strength was up to six times stronger with a nanostructure of only 60 nanometers in depth. Measuring the external quantum efficiency, we see that while the flat devices rapidly fall to zero, 
The non-structured devices show several peaks depending on their lattice parameter. The photodetectors with a 400 nanometers lattice parameter show some peaks that are mostly eclipsed by the singlet absorption. However, the ones with the lattice parameter of 500 nanometers are much more pronounced and can be located on the 750 to 850 nanometer regions for the P3HD PC6TBM with an enhancement of up to four times uh, and on the 800 to 900 nanometers region for the PV3T PC7 TVM devices with an enhancement of up to 5.5. For the photodetectors that had a 600 nanometer slice parameter, the absolute peaks are lower, especially the P3HT. However, they go much deeper into the near infrared. In P3H3, they cover the region from 900 to 1000 nanometers and they have an enhancement of up to five times. And for PV triple T, they cover the range from 950 to 100, 1000 nanometers with an enhancement of up to six times. Even though the absolute values might not be that impressive, an, enhance an enhancement of five to six times is quite acceptable. We decided to apply some voltage to the 500 nanometer slightest parameter photodetectors and the results look quite promising. We see that while the flat photodetector response stays more or less flat, the nanostructure photodetector response rises significantly with the voltage. We performed some further characterization on the photodetectors to evaluate their performance when comparing them to flat, non-structured photodetectors. In the case of the responsivity, we can not only see that it's much higher for the nanostructured photodetectors than, the, than for the flat ones, but that the saturation voltage at which all the charges have been extracted occurs at much lower voltages, that meaning that we can be pretty confident that the amount of charges generated on the nanostructure photodetector is significantly higher. We can also see that the dark currents are always more or less on the same order of magnitude, which indicates that the nanostructuring process is not hindering the device performance. We can also see that the time response is approximately the same and the device's linear dynamic range is greater than 50 dBs. Finally, we wanted to manufacture a test device with all the photodetectors in one substrate to further prove the tunability of our active layers. In this device, we have the same, act the same active layer, but three different photonic crystals, 400 nanometers on the top, 500 nanometers on the middle, and 600 nanometers on the bottom. And we can see that for visible wavelengths, all three photonic crystals perform better than the surrounding flat area, but whenever we start going into the near infrared, the 400 nanometer one stops having an enhanced signal. And when we go even deeper, the only one that exhibits a significant signal is the 600 nanometer one. This could be used as an all-in-one substrate spectrometer with the need, without the need of any extra prism or grading, for example among many other possible uses. We recently published a paper about it in case any of you wants to dig in deeper into the details. I'll try to leave the link in somewhere on the chat or on the description. It is open access so anyone can read it anywhere. You have no excuse. Finally, I would like to thank my supervisor, Mariano Campoy Quiles, uh, the FPU program and the ERC Consolidator Grant program uh, which found my research, as well as uh, my group Nanopto at ICMAP and ICMAP CSIC, which is my research institute. Uh, and of course, thank you for your attention. If there's any question, it will, it will be more than welcome.